What's up guys, welcome back to another video and today we're going to be talking about Chimera OS on the Steam Deck LCD while tied to a external graphics card over Oculink. If you saw my previous video about Bazite, you know that I tested it out and it did not run well. It ran really terrible even though it claimed to have AMD drivers for the 6600 XT. It did not run well and I reinstalled it twice and I, tr I spent way too long trying to figure it out. But Chimera worked instantly and real quick, Holo I ISO, I could not get that thing to run off a USB-C. So I bailed on that and went straight to Chimera, and Chimera literally worked out of the gate. You don't have to do anything, all right? Nothing. I did notice um, some losses in performance between Chimera and Windows. About in Cyberpunk, it was a loss of about nine frames between Windows and Chimera, which is a big drop. That's that's huge. But I will argue that Chimera runs way better than Windows. The operating system smoother, uh, just all around, just just a much user friendly experience. And unlike in Windows, you can play natively on the Steam Deck, so that 800p resolution really looks good uh, on this small screen and doing 800p. RT Medium, RT Ultra, all the good stuff, all the high graphics presets on a handheld is really nice experience. By no means is this a tutorial video. I just want to quickly break down everything you need to tie a eGPU to your Steam Deck. And the main thing is obviously a Steam Deck and access to your M.2 port. Whether it's an Oculink or a M.2 to PCI X16 slot, it doesn't matter. You just need access to that port. You will need a dongle. This is an Anchor A383, 10 gigabits, 100 watt PD. You don't need that much. You can do five gigabits and at least a 50 watt PD. You would need some type of SD to hold your operating system. This is actually a flash drive, that blue one. It is a USB type C flash drive. It's up to 400 megabits. Or you can do a two and a half inch drive in a caddy that does about 500 megabits. Or you can also use a M.2 Caddy, which I believe is up to 600 megabits. Honestly, I don't really notice a difference between either or. I like the USB-C uh, flash drive that does 400 megabits because it's smaller, it's more compact, and there's no cords to it, so I prefer to use that now. But with all that said, I highly recommend not to use your micro SD. It is stupid slow. A controller is optional. A USB flash drive that has at least eight gigabytes so that you can flash the Chimera OS onto. You will need an external display or you could use a dummy HDMI plug. Um, I think right now the easiest way to do it is to have an external display which will be plugged into your graphics card and it has to be an AMD card. Um, it doesn't work with Nvidia cards as of now and also you're gonna need a power supply. I know this might seem overwhelming and like a lot of items to have to just do this, but when you think realistically, I would assume a lot of you already have a lot of these things like a dongle, a USB flash drive that has at least eight gigabytes, an external display. Remember TVs are external displays as well. Uh, so the big things that you would probably need is maybe the SSD caddy, but I would argue to get that USB-C flash drive to run your OS because it's small, compact, and it's less than $20. But let's say you have a spare two and a half inch drive, you can get a caddy for 10 bucks, maybe even less. I've, got, I've gotten one for $8 before. So I would assume majority of you would probably just need to get a graphics card, a power supply, and an M.2 to PCI X16 slot, or a Oculink cable. So right now, Amazon Oculink cables with the adapter is about $30 to $40 range. You can get a power supply for as low as $30. Uh, so let's just round it up to about 70 bucks on the high end for everything except for the graphics card and then on the, when it comes to the graphics card you can get one on the used market i always always push buying secondhand graphics cards because they're so cheap if you put in a little effort and do some legwork you'll find some steals some steals but if not you can go to amazon you can get an rx 588 gigabyte card for about 80 sometimes even 60 bucks if on sale they're probably refurbished old x mining cards but still you'll have at least a 30 day warranty on them maybe 60 days maybe 90s if you buy them on amazon also you know you can look at newegg 
and Best Buy, they all always have some deals, so shop around. You don't need to spend that much on a graphics card, considering the CPU it will be the bottleneck no matter what. Take a look at that 70 plus 80. We're only looking at about $150 to do this mod. Realistically, $150 is, is not a lot of money, considering that the ROG Ally GPU dongle is like $800. It's eight hundred dollars. A hundred fifty versus eight hundred dollars. You could make this setup and buy a brand new Steam Deck for that price. You can get an OLED Steam Deck and get this whole setup and still spend less than an ROG Ally and its dongle, like half the amount. It's probably only going to cost you about brand new Steam Deck six forty nine plus one hundred and fifty. So it's going to cost you eight hundred dollars to do this whole setup with an OLED if you wanted to. And if those numbers don't entice you, let me show you what this thing is capable of in handheld mode. This is PAL World running on epic settings here natively on the Steam Deck. And we're getting well above 30 frames, sticking into those 40s, running around with an epic render distance, epic texture quality. Everything is on epic right now and we're playing it on a Steam Deck. And the reason why we're able to do this is because of the 6600 XT. It would be a lot better if the CPU on a Steam Deck was better. And keep in mind, this Steam Deck is overclocked to a 22 watt TDP, which would just basically allow the CPU to boost to the higher clocks a little bit longer. So this will perform better than most other Steam Decks um, with or without the 6600 XT because of that overclock. But as you can see here in Power World, everything is looking great. And then when we get to the base, it still holds those frames very well. You'll do see stutters here and there, but that's just the nature of the game. This is a very CPU demanding game. If the CPU was slightly better in this game, we would probably be closer to 60 frames, but you know, it is what it is. Steam Deck is what the Steam Deck is. But for me, from coming where I was playing, basically low settings and barely holding mid 30 frames to getting 40 frames at Epic, I will play this any day, any day. This looks amazing. Power World is a big win with this setup. This is Baldur's Gate 3 Ultra setting. 800p Ultra settings. This game looks great. Normally in this scene, it would chug. These flames go hard. And a Steam Deck cannot keep up with them. But with this setup, man, it has no problem whatsoever. 60 frames, Ultra settings. We do see dips into the mid 50s as we run and as we transition to different scenes. Here we're about to transition into a cutscene with the outdoor atmosphere and you do see drops here into the mid 30s in this cutscenes. But for the most part, and yeah the hair kind of glitched out there, uh, we're in the mid 40s and staying well above there. But we do see some frame drops, and I think that's all just CPU issues, um, just computing, or maybe it is the fact that we are running this game through a SD card. So, for whatever it is, still looks really good, really great. Definitely, definitely a huge upgrade from the stock Steam Deck. And in the battle scenes, we get 60 frames. It runs amazing. This game runs amazing. Yes, we haven't gotten into the scenes when there are a lot more assets on the screen, but if we're getting 60 here, I don't see why we wouldn't get mid 40s, low 50s there. Really, it's it's really awesome experience. Definitely a huge win here with this setup in Baldur's Gate 3. Last game I tested out is Helldivers 2. We're running ultra presets on everything. We're at the max in this game with this configuration and we're getting near 60 frames here on the ship. Jumping down in a level five difficulty with three players on a map, we do see quite a bit drops into the high 20s. But I don't know if you guys can tell, but 
it doesn't feel like molasses to me. The stutters don't feel bad. It feels like a steady 30 to me, but I'm not sure if that illustrates well in the video. But if you look at, if I did not have the frame counter, I would think I was still above 30 steadily. But with the frame counter, it, it tells me I'm not, but it feels like I am. So I don't know if it illustrates that in the video, if it, if you feel like it is stuttering badly or looks like molasses, please let me know in the comments below. I did end up doing testing on low, medium, and high preset, and it's very marginal, the difference. I think the difference between low and ultra preset is maybe three frames, typically two. So there's really kind of no point. I, I just went ahead and just played ultra the whole time and I had a really fun experience uh, playing it on this game and I actually had it playing on the monitor next to me which is a 15 inch monitor and it was playing at the 800p resolution and even in that 15 inch monitor it still looked good because we were on ultra settings and you can see the detail yes there's a was a lot of pixelation but the extra high detail really made up for it and because we are so CPU bound, it, to me, I was like, why not just, just send it? Let's just make it look as good as we can because there's no way we're gonna increase the frames whatsoever with this CPU bottleneck. There you have it. Ultra settings, high epic render distance on a Steam Deck is something that I didn't think was gonna be possible. But thanks to Chimera, uh, and you know the external graphics card it is super doable. Yes, the CPU is a huge bottleneck It's not meant for an external graphics card. You gotta remember Valve Explicitly designed the CPU to be well balanced to run with the Steam Deck not to have graphics cards attached to it But thanks to Chimera you can and it's a very very simple setup all you really need is the external graphics card a m.2 to pci x16 a power supply or power source of some kind it's really not that hard and it's not that expensive you're looking at the ally you're looking at the gpu kit for the ally or maybe a, a oculink kit for like the win 2 or something all those things cost several hundred dollars this thing if you're if even if you buy everything brand new you can still get around the 150 dollar mark if you get an rx 580 which is not a bad idea because remember the cpu is going to be a bottleneck no matter what you're probably going to see a difference of between five maybe eight frames between the 6600 xt and the rx 580 and it the price difference does not make sense to spend more money on a 6600 xt when you can get pretty close to the same performance with rx 580 so 150 bucks is not a lot yeah given you don't have you know the dongle or another monitor yes those are other things that you need to add to that but relatively speaking you have you have a tv you don't need a monitor and a dongle you can get for 20 bucks so 170 dollars so if you're on the fence of saying that this is too expensive or maybe i should just build a pc then just go ahead build a pc i'm not telling you not to build a pc i just want you to know there's a, another option on the table download chimera super simple install and i'm gonna do a video on how to do it soon i kind of just want to do this one as like an intro so you know what you're getting into and get a graphics card screwdriver, driver pci x16 to m.2 power supply bada bing bada boom you're pretty you're pretty much there it's really not that much faff and it's really not that expensive like i said in the beginning of the video you can get a steam deck a brand new steam deck and a setup like this and still spend less than a ROG Ally or a Legion. Um, obviously, if you go with the OLED, then, you know, you'll spend quite a bit more uh, around the $800 to 850 mark. But still, it's relatively inexpensive. And when you're thinking like a mid-tower PC, you're right in that kind of realm. The mid-tower PC realm is around that six to $800 range, probably maybe even 650 to 800 dollar range and with this setup you can get a brand new steam deck 350 150 there it's 500 bucks maybe 550 let's just say it's 600 bucks all out of the gate add an extra hundred dollars on there um still cheaper so i don't i don't see the big point so if you're one of those and you said just build a pc this is technically cheaper than a pc and it still can go to handheld mode so there you go so 
Well, thanks for making it through this video. This was a fun journey. I'm glad we were able to finally do it natively. Uh, it's so it's so freaking cool being able to do ultra settings on a Steam Deck. So if this is a setup that you are thinking about doing, I will do a full breakdown video of what you need, how to do it, and it's like I said, it's pretty simple. But other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.